Hello everyone, it's Gail, and I am going to be playing. There's something I've been dying to try, and I sat down and was trying to do it with scrap clay and kind of got an idea on how to do it, and so I was going to try it with real clay and thought I would do it on camera. So if I mess up, you'll see me mess up. But I'm going to try to do a Celtic knot bracelet and it's something I've been like I said I've been wanting to do it for a while and I came across the instructions actually they're not instructions for a polymer clay bracelet they were instructions for how to tie a cord bracelet and I thought well you know you could make a cord out of polymer clay so that's what I'm going to do so what I'm going to do I'm going to mainly stick with black clay and I will explain why. Um, I'm going to put mica powders on it and in this case I'm going to use Perfect Pearls after it's extruded and I'm going to use my Macon's extruder and I've got a couple of logs of black clay and the reason I did a couple is because I'm not sure how many it's going to take and on my Macon's extruder this should be that should about fill it you can go by the length here and that's I could go back further but I think that's going to be enough but I'm going to extrude some black clay and I'm using the it's like the third smallest die. It's not the biggest, it's not the smallest, it's kind of in the middle. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to extrude a, black, a long black snake. And depending on how long it is will depend on how many of these I have to do. But I won't know till I extrude it. So I'm going to just use my Macon's extruder because I imagine mo that's what most of you have access to, either a Macon's or a Walnut Hollow. And let me get it down to where it starts coming out. There we go. And I'm going to extrude this, hopefully, all in one piece, because that's what I need, is one long piece. When you're using your Macon's extruder, see how just moving my hands, how this has kinked, your extrusion and that happens a lot just because of the way your hand works so just be trying to do constant pressure don't pause see there's a ripple where I stopped it a bend don't pause and just let it go as long as you can and try not to let it ripple I, I may do the other one Oh, maybe not. I was going to do the other one with my Lucy Clay extruder, but it's it's just a lot to get out. But let me see. I believe this is a 12-inch tile. Let me see. Almost, about 11 and a half. So I'm going to do two lengths of this for a strip. So this is going to be about, about 23, 24 inches. And let's see if the other one is as long. I believe it is. So I'm going to have two pieces. And that seems to have worked okay. Now, for this, I've extruded a lot. I mean, not extruded. I have conditioned a lot of black clay because I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm going to concentrate on the... Uh, cords first. So what we're going to do, lay them out in a manner that you can get to all of them, all of it. And this is where you can kind of roll your clay in places where it might have kinked when you extruded it. I'm going to put these separate. And I'm using Perfect Pearls this is forever green and forever blue 
in Forever Violet. Now normally I would use my fingers, but today I'm going to be using a brush. And what I've done is I just took an old paintbrush. It's not an expensive paintbrush. It was made in Taiwan. You know it wasn't but so good. And I cut the fuzzy end off so that it's just a little, it's soft, but it's enough to grab some uh, mica powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it in the green, and I'm just going to put some green and I'm going to just put it in different places doesn't have to be symmetrical if you want to do it all in one color you can but I just like the idea of the Mardi Gras colors which are the purple and blue and gold I believe I could ought to put some gold in here Maybe I will. Let me see how these three colors do. But I'm just... Whoops. It's not the color I wanted, but let me do some blue. But just, you know, what we need to do is because we're going to be trying to tie this in a knot, the mica powders will keep the uh, clay from sticking to itself and make it easier to do. That and the fact it just makes them beautiful. Now, I've seen other tutorials on doing Celtic knots and they always start with the black and then do the mica powders afterwards and I just think it would make it much easier because you can always touch it up after you put it together. Well, there's some green. Let's do some blue in places that I don't already have blue that is and just dab it. You know you can put it anywhere because you can go over it with another color You can kind of turn this a little bit to make sure the blue is going or the colors are going all the way around. Let's see. Or you can just tap it off like that. But I like to turn this so that it's getting on all the way around on this black. And I think I will add some gold just to add some color. Let's see, where else do I want some blue? And I'm just trying to space it around so that you don't have uh, all the color in one place. It's hard to tell when you do your knot where this is going to end up. And put some on the end. Let me do some purple. I got a lot on my brush that time, didn't I? Let me just roll that around in it. And I'm just brushing it here and there. Like I said, there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting anything. I'm just adding color. I love perfect pearls. One thing I like about perfect pearls is when you're when you if you put it on raw clay and then bake it, the plant there are little uh, there's something in the perfect pearls that causes it to stick to your polymer clay. There are other mica powders out there. And you really need to seal those to make sure that your uh, mica stays on. But you don't have to do that with Perfect Pearls. And let me get a gold. And this is Perfect Gold. Oh, this one hasn't been opened. I hope probably has a piece of tape on it. Whoops. 
That would have been a disaster, wouldn't it, if it had fallen? I think that might have it. Just to brighten it up. Oh, and this is sparkly. Don't want to put a whole lot, but just in places where you might not have any color, add some gold. I might add some of this later also. Ooh, there we go. You can see that. But just try to make sure that all of your cord is covered in some kind of mica powder. There's a place right there that doesn't have anything, so let's cover that with some gold. But we're going to be tying this in a knot. And you know how clay is. If, it's, if you lay it on top of itself, it's going to stick to itself. So I figured if we put the mica powders on it. Now, I'm, this is just an experiment for me. I have not really seen. There might be something out, you know, some tutorials out there where people have done this. I haven't seen them. Doesn't mean they're not out there. But this is something, like I, said, I keep seeing them in, I see pictures and I'll say, oh, that's pretty. And I'll say, oh, well, that's made out of cord. And I finally just decided I was going to try to do this in clay. And I think that might be enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this, but I'm going to leave it on my table because I'm going to come back later after it's all tied together and touch up any spots that might need some color or any place where the color may have come loose and just kind of roll your all this stuff that's on the paper make use of it roll your piece on there make sure everything has got some mica powder on it and I think that's going to do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bend this in half. And we're going to have two, two ropes that are bent in half. Like that. I probably ought to flip my paper over. So you can, well, I don't guess it's going to bother you too much, the color behind it. Now what we're going to do, first of all, and I've got my instructions right here, so if you see me flipping papers, that's what I'm doing. But we're going to lay one like this. Just lay it on your table. And then on the other one, I'm going to have the ends down here on the left and the loop on the right, and you're just going to bend the loop over. Like that. Try to get it as close to the middle as you can because the strings that are going to be left over on each end are going to be the rest of your bracelet. You're going to have a knot and then the bracelet. So there's that. That looks about right. And then, let's see. I'm going to have to turn this so it looks just like it does on my picture or else I'm not going to remember what I'm doing. <laughs> and my picture has it like this. Like this, really. With this laying underneath. And again, you want to get it towards the middle. Okay, so now we're going to take the bottom cord 
and go under under the this I don't know what you want to call them the ends and then it's going to come around and so you've got this cord here you're going to come down under the other cord and then back up through that same loop and you can see these are not going to be long enough I don't think then you just slowly let's see which one is that that's this one this is probably I can pull this And you just slowly fiddle with it. Now, I know that I'll put a diagram because I know you probably couldn't see exactly what I was doing. But you just kind of play with this a little bit. This one needs to get a little shorter, but this one needs to get a little longer. So how am I going to do that? This loop needs to get longer. So let me pull from here. You just have to be careful so you don't break your clay. Now the alternative to this is baking your strips, your strings first. and then tying them together but I don't think you would get the same effect let's see this one is this one so I can pull this up a little bit to shorten that and then pull it around and what I ought to do is to get a string or something to show you exactly what I did. Pull that. So you, you just have to keep fiddling with it until you get each section the way you want it to look. So I got that part looking how I want it to look. Now I need to get this one looking how I want it to look. And then you take your strings and they will come out to the side. Now what I would like to do and what I have done, I have taken some black Primo and I've rolled it out on the thickest setting of my pasta machine and I'm going to cut this is one of Tiny Pandora's cuff bracelet blanks or not this isn't the bracelet blank this is the blank that you use to cut so I'm going to cut that straight get it it's going to end up with mica powder all over it and I'm going to use that as a base to put this on because you're going to need something for strength to hold your bracelet together that's not exactly in the middle let me just move it down a little bit put it in the middle It looks like I could have gone with the next smaller blank. So I might do that. Let me just pull this up. It's not stuck because of the mica powder. So let me get the next. Oh, 
that would be the small one. Let me see how that works. And this may be too skinny, but let's see. You just need something for the for you to attach these strings to. Because this will go around. This will that might work. I'm just trying to, I'm just doing this for size right now. But again, what you might want to do is put some. Of course, I'm using liquid Kato. But use some liquid clay. Let me get my Kato brushes out again. When I say Kato, it's my liquid clay brushes. And just put that on here so that this will stick. You could use Bacon Bond. You're just going to need something because you've put the mica powders on the clay to keep it from sticking. It won't stick to this clay either. So you need to put something that will cause it to, to stick. I just ordered another one of these. This one's begun to leak. So I ordered another one of these and another bottle of liquid Kato because I use it a lot. It also, if you use liquid Kato and a heat gun, it adds a really nice shiny finish to your clay. So let me do that and try to find the middle or close to the middle. Actually, I probably, sorry, I think I'm going to put that on a bracelet blank. Now, I'm using Pandora's largest blank because I need the room on the sides to, uh, um, sorry, I just had a, my brain just started going off in another direction. I'm going to trim these off. But I need room on either side to finagle and play with the ends of my bracelet. So I'll put that on there. I'll lay this across the top. And see if I can get all four of these onto this little strip. Sorry, I was... See if I can get all four of these onto this little strip. And then I can Trim these off. There we go. Now I don't have it be a little bit easier to work with because I won't have so much hanging over. But this is the bracelet that I'm making. And I'm going to even it up a little bit and then I'll bake it. And then I'll be back to show you how I'm going to finish it. I'm also going to do a another demonstration on how I tied 
this because I know when I did it the one time you probably didn't catch exactly what I was doing. So I will do it for you again maybe with a string that uh, because it doesn't hurt to practice. That's what I did. I practiced the knot before I started doing my video. But let's look at it and see what we want to do here. I might want to... That shows the gold. The one color that doesn't show up very much there is the purple in the knot itself. There's lots of green and blue and some gold, but not much purple. So let me just add a little bit of purple. Maybe here. And let's see, where else can I put some? I can put some right there. And then pull those together. But what do you think? Do you like that bracelet? And of course you can use other colors. You don't have to use the colors I used. Use whatever colors you've got. Unless you want to buy more Perfect Pearls. But I'm going to just level this out a little bit. You know, make sure that everything is matched. Matter of fact, what I might do... Let me see if I have enough. I was thinking I might take one of these pieces and go around under the knot just to kind of cover up the side of my brace of the black base that's underneath. Can you see the difference here? Here I, you can see the black underneath and here you can't. So I might try to Probably should have done that before, <laughs> but you know, I'm doing things on the fly here. Let me start here on this end. And just pick up your knot and put this under the knot. You can just tuck the end under. And nobody ever needs to know that there's nothing attached to that. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll just tuck it under and I'll bring this knot down so that you can't see it. And do I have any others that are long enough for the other side? Probably not, because that wouldn't that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Although this one might be long enough. I can get that up under this knot. Let me just pick it up, tuck this underneath, and bring the knot down over it, and nobody will ever know the difference. But yet it covers up this ugly side. Lift this side. Which one of these is the longest? I think this one is probably the longest. There. Now you can't even see that there's black underneath here. So I'm going to go ahead and bake this now. And I will be back and show you the end result. I'm back. I just wanted to show you before I put it in the oven. There were some things I didn't show you before. And that is the ends. And you can see this one is nice and finished. And looks nice and smooth and finished. This side is still 
chunky because you need to finish the ends and what I did is I just took my thumb and rolled on the end and you know it rolls up underneath you can see how it rolls up underneath and then just took my blade and trimmed it off And that gives another finished look. And you can just make sure. Another thing, there were a couple little places where there were some dents where I had fingernail marks. Just take your thumb and just run over it until those marks disappear. Don't do it long, hard enough that you're going to take the design out. But you can rub over it to get the fingernail marks off. I don't even have any fingernails. I don't know how people with fingernails work with clay. Because I don't even have fingernails and I still get fingernail marks in my clay. But there's a few in here. But there you go. So I will be back shortly. Okay, while my bracelet is baking, I thought I would come back and try to show you a little bit closer uh, how to tie that knot. And what I'm doing, instead of using clay, I'm going to use yarn. So I don't know how this is going to work. We will find out when I get to tying. And this might be a little twisted because it's going to be hard to keep it flat, but you will get the idea, hopefully. So you've got two pieces of yarn. One of them you start with the legs on the left and then right about the middle of that you just fold and this is coming over the top you've got the loop in that's coming over the top this is too close then you have this end that's going to be up underneath. So the green or the other the second number two is going to be underneath. Now what you're going to do is bring the number two over this loop and under the legs. Got that? Then you're going to take, still working with number two, so you might want to slide it down a little bit. Still working with number two, you come over the black loop, under the number two string, and back up in the loop. And then you pull it, and you pull it, and that makes your knot. Yeah, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, let me take it apart and I'll do it again. Maybe I'll start with this as being the number one. And I'll use the green, I mean the black, as number two. So the legs, the open end, the legs are on the left. You make a loop. The loop side, the and that's together that comes across the top you take these this and they also the legs are to the left it goes underneath the green loop or the number one loop it'll go over this under the legs If it helps you to pull this up, then you'll go over the green loop, under itself, under the same color, and then back up through the loop, through the same loop. And then you just slowly pull them together. And of course, if this was clay, you would have to do it really carefully. But you would pull it together, and then just, and that would give you your knot. So I hope this helps. That gives you your Celtic knot. I hope this helps you in doing your clay. Um, 
what I may try to do is to make a little file with the pictures of the cord that I've got here that kind of show you how to do it and I will try to think of a way to attach that maybe I'll just attach it in the comments below so please click show more and I will see if I can attach it in the comments below uh, if not I will figure out a way to do it so I hope this helps I'll be back after my bracelet comes out of the oven hi I'm back I've got my bracelet out of the oven I'm just kind of looking at it to make sure everything looks the way I thought it would and I'll show you to take it off of the form all you do is just you can just run your fingers down the side and just it'll pop right off and there's your bracelet it's flexible let's put it on so there you go if you like if you have a hi I'm sorry about that the video for some reason just stopped I think I was showing you that if you would like to make this a little bit you know expand it a little bit and you want it to go around your wrist more I happen to have a small wrist but you can drill holes just take a little drill press and I'm not going to drill a hole but put maybe two little holes here and two holes here and then you can attach a uh, chain with the lobster clasp you can put jump rings in there put chain on it and a lobster clasp and that way it would hold it on your wrist so it won't fall off but I'm not going to do that I do I may because I like this color so much I may put a finish on it I may sand it a little bit this edge here doesn't look real smooth but this is basically the bracelet so I hope you like it hope you make one for yourself and I will see you soon bye bye